Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Hi, I'm Iris Acker and I am your host today. The topic is, oh, I took that topic, coaching high profile <laughs> performers. Wow. You like that, didn't you? Mm. I like that. <laughs> that I like. I like saying it. <laughs> Let's meet the panel first. Uh, Michael McKeever, playwright, actor, Karen Stevens, actress, writer, Bill Hirschman, who is our theater critic. I want to say at large. What does at large mean? It's that I haven't dieted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and our guest today, Stuart Solomon. Stuart, high Hello. profile performers. <laughs> okay. I'm joining in. Uh, <laughs> right at the top. Hi, just, I have to say this. Why you? Why you for these high profile performers? <laughs> I'm going to answer the Zen answer is why not? <laughs> <laughs> what do you bring this to the party? I know, first tell group. us what it is you do. Uh, right. I'm exactly. A, I'm a media you, coach, acting coach, um, and I also teach uh, bo uh, voice and articulation. But I'm known more for teaching acting for film, TV, and theater. For example, for example, give me a high-profile performer. Uh, the Estefans, Gloria and Emilio. Both of them? Well, Emilio's not a, a performer, but I'm a client. Uh, he's my client. Gloria is certainly a client. Has been since the first movie. Um, with Meryl Streep, so I've been with her for about, about 12, 13 years already. Yeah. How do you do that? I mean, how do you yeah. take someone who does n who may be a performer, but is not trained as an actress? What yeah. do you? How do you make that connection? You, well, you put band-aids on, and, mm -hmm. and explain you, in, in the sense that Gloria certainly there, there's nothing you have to teach her about media. Um, and when we did the first film, um, it, it, she was at the height of her career, and you. You just kind of do the part, and she picks up on it, and she kind of knows what to do. And you, and I tell her how to say certain lines. But I, in the, but in that in that transitional period, I'm still teaching her about acting, as much as I can to give her certain principles. And she picked up on it. That that wasn't easy doing the the, the first um, her first movie and her first scene was with Meryl Streep on the first day of shooting. But she was undaunted by it. Give an example. I mean, what yeah. did you tell her? What did you? Show her that she goes. Oh, that's how it's done. That's almost a. That's a very. As a no, no, it's not. No, it's not. But I'll tell you what I did. You know, I, 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 I'm a film person that's also, tough. and on the, the the first scene was an eating scene, which anybody who knows film, that is the worst thing to have to match eating something. So, what but, I did I'm was. Sorry, what do you mean you say have to match? What does that you mean? You have to match for every setup. You have to do the same scene over and over. And if you take a bite out of a sandwich, it has to be the same for setup after setup after setup after setup. For continuity. Take after take after take. So I said, oh my God, I don't want her to have to sit there and worry about where she bit a sandwich and when she swallowed. <laughs> and they asked me, what do you want her to eat? I said, carrot sticks. They went, what? I said, carrot <laughs> sticks. So if you look and you look at the film, you see her first scene with Meryl Streep. She has a carrot stick. What film is that? Um, what, what film oh, is it? Oh, it was called 50 Violins, and then, um, oh, what changed? What was it? The, the name? Um, music of the Heart. That's it, Music the of the Heart. The original 50 Violins and changed to Music of the Heart, directed by Wes Craven. And that was quite something for the first film to have to do for anybody. And she was undaunted by it. But I made it easier, carrot sticks. And if you look at the film, your first scene, you see her holding a carrot stick through most of it. So she didn't have to worry about eating it. At the end, she did and the Foley <laughs> artist put a uh, Bugs Bunny crunch in it. <laughs> Again, why there. you? I should have, huh? Oh, why me? Stuart, how did she get to you? Oh, how did I get to her? <laughs> yeah, oh. um, um, John Sakata. This is true. Uh, I was called by a Crescent Moon. Uh, John Sakata was looking for an acting coach because he, at the time, wanted to get into film work. So I was called, and I go into Crescent Moon, and then uh, the elevator opens, and there's one of my students. She goes, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know. What are you doing here? She says, I work here. I said, is this the place where I help get you the job? She went, yeah. She says, who are you here to see? I say, John Sakata. She says, you're in. So I met John. We talked. We hit it off extremely well. He's, he's, he's a great guy. And he's cute, too. Huh? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> then he, he said, I'm going to introduce you. We hit it off. We worked on some auditions. I'm going to introduce you to my friend Gloria. I said, okay. 
And he did, and a month or two later, I get a call. And that's how it happened. They wanted me to meet with her. I went to her home. She was taping something. We talked for two hours. We're both chatterboxes, and we just hit it off so well. And that was it. When the project is over, do they continue um, studying with you? Some do, some can't. Gloria's really too busy to do it, but it's, it's project by project. I have a couple of other students now that I'm working with. I insisted that they do work with me afterwards. Um, I hope you won't be mad at me. Leslie Grace, who's a very big and up and coming singer, um, she, we, we did some work for a film and I, I made her promise that if we work on it, that she has to study so that we don't always have to keep putting band-aids on her, or like I told her, so you don't get caught with your pants down, because it's going it's it's to keep increasing. It's an expression, like a band-aid. Huh? That's interesting. It's, it, I've, I've not heard that in films, television, or theater before. I put a band-aid on Put a band-aid on. on. You can't keep doing but it. You I'll, can do that for so long, and then the audience will find out. Sure. Well, give an example sure. again. What do you mean specifically? You gotta learn acting technique. You have to learn how to create a character. You have to learn about intentions. You have to learn about objectives. You have to learn how to pace a line. You have to learn how to color the text. You just gotta get into it. But that's not a band -aid. No, but you have to learn that eventually. I oh, can tell okay. you know I okay. can tell a client hit this word and do this and extend the sound. That's and, the band -aid. You know, yeah. it's, it's almost yeah, it's almost like conducting, especially okay. with a singer. Sure. They understand talking on pitch. That that they do. But eventually, you, you know, you just got to know what you're doing. When you have a session out. that's not specifically for a project, where you're not working on a specific scene, and it's just a session working with a, a high-profile um, celebrity, what is a session like? I mean, do, do you work on a specific monologue? Yes. Do you just work in... And, and if you could step us through that, how, how that works. In other words, you've got a monologue. It's, a, say, a, a two-minute monologue, a three-minute monologue. Yep. Do you have them do it? And then you say, okay, let's, let's start at the beginning and, and, and take it yeah, apart? Yeah, I, I, I do a mini-analysis with them, who, what, when, where, and why, in any form that they want. Um, and then I start to, 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 to teach them a little bit about the text and the structure. And I say that plays and films follow a specific structure as old as Aristotle. It, it, and you just have to know why an author put this scene here, what it does to advance the story. And it's all about the art of storytelling. I don't say acting too much to my students anymore. I say we're storytellers. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I learned that from Bruce Miller at a university in Miami. <laughs> the actor is <a> storyteller. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he has a great book. And I really do believe that. So they're storytellers, and that, and that takes the... The, 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 the fear of being an actor, because I think it's very lofty. I don't think it's very lofty. I love the craft. I don't want to upset him. I love the craft, <laughs> I love the craft but it's, we're in the business of entertainment. Sure. And that makes it so much easier. So when you have clients that are already in the business of entertainment, yes. they understand that concept. Their egos are not somewhere in the stratosphere where they should not be. I, it's funny because it makes perfect sense where you're, you're, they've got this talent, but they're just using it in a different way. Instead of telling a, a story through way of song, they're doing it by, by performance through mm -hmm. a scene. Is that difficult to do? Or, yes. is, that, or is it, oh, it is difficult. There yeah. you are. Uh, my take on it is, is that I, I'm sorry I shouldn't be hitting my microphone. My, <laughs> My take on it is, is that acting is a great equalizer. You can have all the hit records, you can be a superstar and all, the, uh, and all the media shows and talk shows when it comes to acting and you walk on that stage, it's like somebody let off an atom bomb, it's devastated and there's nothing left. It's a great equalizer, it doesn't matter who you are. That's what I try to teach them, it doesn't matter. You're going to get on that stage, all bets are off. Stage or, or the film set. I, I do believe that. There's How nothing did you get like involved it. in the Latin community? Well, you were at very theater, so you know what I'm talking yeah, about. You sure. get on that stage, it yes. doesn't matter. Yeah. You get yeah, in yeah. front of that camera, doesn't matter. Now, you might have more confidence and a little bit more at stake, okay? And, and more of a willingness to go through it, more of a confidence that they could sing and do all the other stuff or do some of these uh, media uh, television shows they do that they could probably act. And. It is kind of true. They probably could, because there's that confidence, that basic platform there. But when it comes to acting and developing a role, you got to know what you're doing. Because I, I, I'm more of a technician. I, I really am. I'm not from the school of you fake it till you make it, and right. you know right. you're going to feel it. And if you feel it, people will see it. That's not true. I'm more from the Stanislavski, Stella Adler, you know, the hardcore stuff. You know. Let's talk about your Latin clients now. Oh. Do you speak Spanish? Not a word. 
Todos my 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 Latin clients is mi amor and the the males mi amigo. That's about all I can You've do. You've got high profile performers that are Latin. Though. Yes, most yes. And are you coaching them in English? Yes, <laughs> in English. Okay. Absolutely, they all know I'm the gringo. El Maestro Gringo, that's my, my, my new title, <laughs> it's true. And they come to me be, because they want to, some want to cross over. Everybody wants to be in yes. American movies. Everybody wants to cross over to American TV. Some of them are smart enough, or their managers are smart enough to know in order for them to do it, they have to get the English language and reduce the accent. So I, I happen to teach uh, voice and articulation, so I do a lot of accent reduction. The elimination, that's rough to do. Sure. That's rough yeah. to do, but part of their charm, I think, is their Spanish accent. So we, we reduce it as much as possible. And they gotta, but that too, they gotta be willing to work. It's not an overnight thing. Do you only work with people who um, are unfamiliar with the craft of acting? I mean, do you only work with people who are trying to learn how to act, or do you work with people who are also... I, I, I work, some of my students are stage people, yes, mm. but, I, but I'm known more as a teacher, and within the Latin market, I, I work with a lot of people from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm. Which I'm enjoying, actually. I love when somebody that come, when, when I get a client that's really advanced and knows what they're doing. That's 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 like a lot of fun for me. But I'm a teacher, so I don't. I try not to discern. Mm -hmm. my, my my job is to teach at whatever mm -hmm. level they're at. Stuart, what's your background? How did you get into this industry? How does how does one become? Oh, uh, no, uh, kind of walk. No, um, <laughs> one day I you woke were trained up, as a watchmaker, right? <laughs> I was trained as a watchmaker. Absolutely. <laughs> so I always I so, so I don't wear one. Um, <laughs> Uh, I have I have a good my background educationally is I have a, a, a bachelor's in film and television and this from University of Florida and at the same time I was getting that yeah you do that Better, too? Yes. oh girl let me tell you <laughs> then I at the same time so you go to the theater department there yes oh yeah so I for four years as I, I went to the theater department and I said listen I I love acting to please my parents I didn't get the degree in and acting, I got it in broadcasting, which turns out obviously to be the smartest thing I ever did. I said, if you will let me, I promise you I will take all your courses, I will be a totally dedicated theater department member, and I did every show there for four years except for two. I took every course going into the master's level. So I'm known at University of Florida more as theater alumni. They won't say journalism. Uh, theater alumni. Then I, ha I, I got a master's in education and um, I went to HB Studios, a lot of stuff in Manhattan, and then I'm um, one of the founding members of what was called National Improvisation in Manhattan, and that was the most amazing school uh, at, of improv. And we had five performing companies, and I was a member of the premier group called Interplay. It was an amazing experience. There's never been anything like that again. Even it was just one of those being in the right place at the right time to learn this magical creative experience and 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 concept of improvisational theater. I'm very blessed that I was able to do that. That colors my work more than anything. This creative spirit and who are some of your high-profile Latin performers? Well, I said the Stephans. I have Leslie Grace right now. I have Fantine. Fantine is the new up-and-coming singer uh, for, for Emilio. She's just bursting out all over the place. Um, Poncho de Anda. I have um, 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 Pamela Silva Condi from, from Univision. Um, uh, Carlos Max. I'm trying to remember. I don't want to. I don't want. There, there's so many of them. I forget. My originally uh, it was Sofia Vergara on her first two films down here. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of them. I should have brought a list and read it. <laughs> <laughs> so pompous. We only have a half hour. We only have a half hour. Is yeah. teaching what, something that you envisioned for yourself when you first? What, what was your uh, original comedy? Goal? Really? Comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From improv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We had we had an amazing company, and I thought I was going to be a comedy star, and then life took a turn, and <laughs> it, it will turn, do. It, which it will do, and it does. But as a happy ending, I never thought I'd be doing this. If you said, um, you remember when I was teaching improv? Remember? Yes. At Mental Falls Theater, 
if you had said to me this was going to happen, that I'd be doing all these Latin high-profile clients, <laughs> I'd say, you're out of your mind. I'm a nice Jewish boy from, you know, Miami Beach. What are you talking about? <laughs> I wouldn't change it for the world. Creative <laughs> workshops. Yes. When you were on last time, that's what we spoke about. Yeah. This was before the celebrities. Right. Well, it was happening, but I never, I never talked about it too much. Really? I, I don't think, I did and I didn't. People knew. I see. I People kind of knew. But creative have... workshops were people just starting out. Yeah, it still it's is. It's a beginner's class. Yeah. Oh, sure. So well, I you still have a lot of non-celebrities. That's well. what we're Absolutely. talking about. Well, I mean, to apply that it didn't. Yeah, of course I do. That's creative. Yeah, I love, I love my beginners. They're, they're great. When you say creative workshops, what exactly yeah. entails yeah. that? What, what is, a, mm. what is uh, your creative workshop? That's my little studio. And I have acting classes there right now on Wednesday night and Saturday afternoon. I have a huge, it's still private clientele. Um, then I'm going to be adding another film class and probably another improv class as we get into the fall. I can't run as many classes as I used to have when I had a real big studio on the West Dixie Highway. About how many students do you have in a class? Ten, no more. Oh, that's I don't want great. Anymore. Yeah, I don't want any more. It's too much. Um, it, 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 it's not what I want to do. I like concentrating on the private work, even with students in speech and diction, the voice. I really like doing that, but I love that, the, 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 the craft of one-on-one -on -one right now. But well, no, I wouldn't stop my school. I think no, it's no. interesting. On the set coach, who yes. pays you? Does your client, client pay you or does the... Um, no, usually the client the, hires me. Client. So they do. I didn't know that. And how do they get referred to you? How do, you fi how do these people find you or you find them? Um, Things, Word of mouth. There it is. I have, you said it before. I have some people that are really very nice to me, and they, they, they just say nice things about me, and I'm pretty much known out there. And it's obviously you're good at what you do. That, I'm sure so. that plays a major part in it. Yeah, you know, it's it's it, it's gratifying with the with the high profile people because you can't fool them. I could fool a newbie. There's a lot. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of that stuff that goes on. You can't fool a high-profile client. So it, it's very gratifying for me because I know I'm doing something right. And then when I see a film or something, I go, I did that. That's like amazing. And they come back for more and introduce me as their acting coach and this and that. I kind of like it. It's it's for me. It's a different. Um, um, it's a different type of being well known. I wasn't expecting it. Sure. You know? Do you get credit? Um, for Good it? question. Uh, on some some stuff, no. This thing that's coming up, I, I don't know yet. I'll What's have to find up? out. What's coming up? Oh, oh, um, a change of heart. That's the last movie I worked on. Gloria Stefan and Emilio produced it. Uh huh. Yeah. So he can say. He can do whatever I want, but you know what? I never asked him. I never asked him. I don't know. I, probably, I hope so. It would be nice. I've always been curious. But I, know, I mean, who's going to look at a credit to see who, who the dialogue or, or the acting <laughs> oh, coach is? I do. I do. <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. Yeah, but, you know, I, my, my ego is large, but it's very tame in that area. I don't know why. It's very tame in that area. Do you find a commonality when you're dealing with celebrities, per se, as far as uh, temperament or will, work ethic, or is it all over the place? Do you have to do you have to finesse them any more than you would anybody else that's in your no, class? No, some are most. You know, I'm very blessed in this area. Are, are, are so humble, and um, I learn a lot from them because I hear their life stories, and a lot of it wasn't easy. They take not most of them. They take nothing for granted, and they know that it can be taken away from them at any time at the drop of a hat. So although the ones that I, I seem to have right now, they work, they're like dogs to get where they are. Uh -huh. Love every minute. I take great pride in family. And what, so no, I, I, every once in a while, I'll meet an egotistical fool. And I'll see them, and they're a star, but I'm not working with them. Because so, we wouldn't <laughs> get along. We, I, I just yeah. wouldn't be able to teach them. But most of the, all of the experiences have been great. You know, otherwise they're not, they're not going to work with me. Yeah, yes. does someone have to interview with you before you accept them as a client? Um, I mean, do you have to find <laughs> out who they are? Yeah, yeah, I do, and I'll talk with them, or they can do it with yeah. me on Skype, or, or come to the studio, and I'll talk with them. But I can pretty much tell in two seconds on the phone. Now, with a student, I want to <laughs> know who, who is coming into the, to the class, a regular student, because some of them, you know, it's still South Florida, and some of them can be a little 
uh, what's the word, rambunctious. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I want to know who's coming into the, into the studio. But most of the time, when I get uh, a high-profile person, <coughs> they're coming recommended from somebody else who is high-profile, or um, like Telemundo or Univision or the stuff on Office, um, uh, Latin World Entertainment. Uh, I, I'm coming pre, pre kind of pre-introduced. Some just hear about me and call. Have you ever had a, a student that they were just you just you couldn't you couldn't work with them? Yes. That's considered a war wait, story. Don't wait till you finish. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, was it just because they um, just didn't have the uh, natural ability or talent, or just because they were a nightmare to work with? Or both? All of the above. One of each. I've seen miracles happen. That uh, somebody that I think is not talented turned out to be one of the best actors I've ever worked with. So I've learned. You, you know who taught me this? Remember Robbie Burns? You remember? Of, course. of course. Right. Robbie Burns told me. I studied yes. with her after conservatory. And I, I would say to her, just like you said, what do you do? If, she said, Stuart, she said, if they get up there and are willing to work, they command my respect. And I never forgot that. And unless they're disrupting, I'll work with them as much as possible. If they disrupt or they're being rude, well, then, of course, I have to ask them to leave. But I think that that happens out of fear. Mm -hmm. I think that they get paralyzed sure. with fear. So you got to, I have to be aware of that. You have to be very nurturing, although I'm not a walk in the park. But there's a way that, I do it a lot with humor, too. I make them laugh a lot. So I just arm the, the ego. You know, you know, we do have egos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we do have an ego, all of us. Yeah. Well, I, I suspect it comes a lot from uh, not only fear, but um, um, uh, insecurity. Low self-esteem. Yeah. Yes, it does. But you know, it can reflect back on the teacher because every actor does, has a resume, and your name is on their resume. Mm -hmm. And Ella Jacoby, who you work with, I know, yes. picks it up and says, he studied with Stuart Solomon? <laughs> you know what I mean? You get, as you say, an untalented person who just, but does, doesn't give up and goes on auditions and gets sent out, and there's your name. And oh my goodness, the so casting director. So your reputation director said, is on the line. Always, too. always. What? He said my reputation is on the line. I That's went, right. Always. Absolutely. So now that I'm, I'm getting a little older, or let's say wiser, <laughs> I, I, I'm a little protective of that because I know that that will happen. And beginning actors think one of their jobs is to diss, you know, um, to, 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 to trash and dish and talk, you know, garbage and mm. he did this and he did me, 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 me. It's really very, you know, Bush League kind of behavior, but people think when you're in the theater, you're supposed to be catty. Which is not true. <laughs> no. Where did they get that? I was no, going to say, I don't not. know where that's written. You know, it, yeah. There's a, no, there's a little passive aggressive behavior that's fun and we have a good time with it. But, but when people are saying that because they haven't done anything or have no talent, and they just, well, I'm going to dish the teacher. Oh. Uh, Got it. You know. Got it. Yeah, so, so you learn. But I, I don't think I have too much of that problem. I hope not. Anyway. I'm not trying to diss or condescend. Okay. This region, per se. But when I heard the phrase celebrity coach or high profile performer coach, if, if I lived outside of Florida, Miami is not the first place that would come to mind. I would be thinking of Hollywood or New York. Mm -hmm. But you've been able to build an entire career, mm -hmm. and people have come to you. Why do you think, not even the fact that you're so good, but why is it that there is a market down here for someone of your level of ability? I think because of the Latinos, because of the Latin networks. The Latin networks are all, at this point, want to cross over into the American market because they want uh, NBC, ABC, mm -hmm. uh, Telemundo, um, um, uh, Mundo Fox. They all want those advertising dollars. I, got, I said that wrong, but you get the gist of it. Sure. They want those advertising dollars, so they're doing shows with Latinos in English, and you wouldn't, you look at a script, you go, this is American. Mm -hmm. they, they want those advertising and dollars. Most of my Latin students have never watched Univision, have never watched Telemundo, have never seen a novella, uh, but they're crossing over. Like, I have one student, I know you got to wind up quickly, uh, Adriana Fonseca, uh, 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 a novella star. I, I, I just think the world of this woman. And I said, if you want to do this, you're going to have to get your English going. And she moved to LA. 
and, oh. I, and I talked to her manager, I said, she's got to go to school. She enrolled in Stella Adler Conservatory. She's still there, I believe. A star, her English is not that good, and she's doing the full thing to learn at, wow. at the height of good her career. Her. That's great. And then going to an English school, uh, English uh, grammar school in Los Angeles also. And we wow. still work on Skype together. I think, you know, that's the kind of commitment sometimes it takes. Mm -hmm. I hope our audience finds this interesting, educational, what really goes on, whether they're a celebrity or not, what it takes to maintain yeah. their celebrity ship. I don't know what that word would be, but to stay <laughs> a there. Lifetime of work. A lifetime need, of work. Yeah, it really can't do it on their own. None of us no. can. Yeah. Gotta have a buddy, gotta have somebody there pushing us. So uh, I don't know what will be next week, but I certainly hope that you will <laughs> turn in because we certainly bring you a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I hope you find it fascinating as I do. And if you want to find out what's going on in theater, which we're very anxious to promote, just go to floridatheateronstage.com. Uh, everything that's happening is right there, is it not, Bill? You're asking the wrong person. Bill <laughs> <laughs> and everything that's happening in the world of theater, <laughs> films, tele television, but eventually is here on Spotlight on the Arts. So do continue to watch us. Thank you. And thank you, Stuart. Thank you. I've, I enjoyed it very much. Thank all of you. Very good. <laughs> <laughs>